day number 16. I'm wearing a mood ring today, my daughter's mood ring, which I think is telling me that I'm active. And so I thought it was a good time to make a video. Today, I wanna to talk about the first rib, which is a very common dysfunctional rib that connects the neck and all the breathing that we've been talking about to the function and stability of the shoulder and the rest of the arm. People are surprised to learn that the first rib is very high. It's right here, the base of the neck, right at the top of the lungs. It connects from the collarbone sternum around to T1 in the back. So it's kind of short, short ring. It's significant because it forms the floor of a tunnel, the roof of which is formed by the collarbone. So the rib, as it's moving up and down, can either open and close down that tunnel. Now, all the blood vessels that exit the heart to go into the arm and hand, and all the nerves that exit the mid cervical spine to travel out into the arm and hand and give it power, have to pass through this tunnel between the collarbone and the first rib. So when that rib gets stuck elevated, for various reasons, which I'll talk about in a second, those structures get compressed, and while this is a mobility problem at its core, it causes some serious stability issues in the shoulder and uh, neck and the rest of the arm during function. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of sports that cause the first rib to get elevated, um, things that involve a lot of shrugging, things that involve a lot of overhead activity, things that cause us to hold our breath, like when we're rock climbing and we're tense, Times when we're breathing really hard, when we're exercising in funny positions like uh, uh, in aero bars on a time trial bike. And even sometimes just our daily dysfunctional patterns like sitting at a desk with the mouse up on the desk or driving with one arm up on the door um, or this arm up on the steering wheel where our shoulders kind of uh, excessively shrugged and we're breathing funny. Because the scalenes, which are neck muscles that come down and attach onto these ribs, are accessory breathing muscles, as we talked about last week, they have the ability to keep those first ribs elevated adaptively, which means they're stuck, inhaled, and the scalenes won't allow them to fully <sighs> exhale, which means that tunnel stays small. Again, compressing those structures. So, I wanna show you today how to use a rubber band, kind of a relatively thin rubber band compared to what I normally use, but how to use this to mobilize that first rib down into depression. Now, for most of us, even if we don't have an elevated rib, this will probably still feel good. If you have an elevated rib, you might get a click, you might get a clunk, and you might have some significant increase in warmth, blood flow, nice feelings in your arm. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna step onto the bottom of the band, you're gonna loop it up over your shoulder as close to your neck as you can get it. I step down on the band to bring tension down on the rib, and you can see that I have it right up against where my scalenes attached to this upper rib over my collarbone. Now, it's important to have it on the skin, and you'll see why in a second. First thing I do, bend to the right, take three big breaths. Each time, I'm really intentional about the exhale and visualizing that rib dropping down as the band pulls it down. After the third deep breath, I already feel a little bit of warmth in my hand. I'm gonna let the band pin the fascia and the scalene muscles and the skin and I'm gonna bend away and look up to the ceiling on the side of dysfunction. I'm gonna hold it there, just breathing normally for about 60 seconds. I can feel the pulling coming from the rib all the way up behind my ear into the base of my head. Try to breathe down into my diaphragm as I hold this. Let the tissue slowly release. And then after a minute, fast forward, we're gonna go back, take three more deep breaths. Now that the scalenes are released and the fascia is released, to encourage that rib to drop down and stay down. And then I'm done. Now, it's important to pair this with re-educating your breathing so that rib doesn't just adaptively stiffen up again. If you don't have a band, never fear, because a belt or a stretching strap will also work. Loop that over your shoulder, grab the band in the back with one hand, band in the front with the other hand, give a nice tension down over the rib, as close to your neck as you can get it, three deep breaths, stretch, Three more deep breaths. I want you all to use a little bit of caution during this technique because we are so close to blood vessels and nerves. 
If it doesn't feel good, if it feels super nervy, painful in your hand, stop, reach out to your local healthcare professional, PT, chiropractor, physician, and try to find out why it's so sensitive for you in that area. There are lots of strategies to do this. This is kind of my everyday, most common strategy that I'll use in the gym. Um, but I hope what you'll find is uh, a more mobility in your neck, um, a lot more stability, strength, confidence in your shoulders, shoulder blades, arms, especially when you're in overhead positions. While I see this pattern uh, really commonly in, in all types of people, um, in the CrossFit gym, I see it as the cause of a lot of impingement problems, um, shoulder blade control problems, uh, labral strain issues, and elbow tendonitis, numbness and tingling in the hand, carpal tunnel. This first rib is really at the headwaters and is the one of the first tunnels that these structures pass through on their way to the arm. So it's a very common place for things to get hung up. Give it a try. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. I look forward to, your, to uh, hearing your feedback. Thanks for tuning in. My, uh, my mood ring, I think now says I'm excited. Um, I am very excited, grateful to be able to share with you guys. So um, please subscribe and share with your friends and I'll see you tomorrow.